Loz Brown a starter today. Malay Hufunga in try scoring form. Stay on side. Amy Park, your venue. <laughs> Melbourne playing host to International Women's Rugby League for the first time. And it's a beautiful afternoon Good as kick. well. And how's this for a start for the Gillaroos? Perfect. Perfect start. That's exactly what you want. I, when she kicked it off, I thought I would have probably preferred it to go a little bit closer to where the sun meets the shadow there. But Loz Brown, she knew what she was doing. Took a wicked turn. What a start for the Gillaroos. Wow. To find grass from the Come first on. kick All in the game. Are All clocks are off. That's outstanding. The ball bounces Stay out on. anywhere from a kickoff. Of course, the, you get the ball Stay back. On. Line drop out from Nathan Wong. And Australia right on the front foot. Kezi Apps playing in the front row. So used to seeing her on an edge. And it's a milestone game so far as International Rugby League is concerned as well. Her 15th game for her country. Martor off the back of it. The other front row. Brown goes right for Brigginshaw. Here comes Upton for Sergis. And there's no room there. Jess did really well to stay away from that sideline in the end. So back to Brigginshaw and back to centre field they go via Loz Brown. And now Aiken off the head of Clydesdale. Let's play on and had to be tidied oh, up. Now it's go. alive for Australia. And Jamie Chapman is centimetres away with a fresh set of six here. From edge to edge, you can see already the Gillaroos. They're looking to pass that footy. New Zealand complaining about a knock on, but of course, if it comes off a head, then it's play on. I think that was really well refereed there. But the Gillaroos on this fast track looking equally as quick. Koenig back on the right edge after playing on the left a fortnight ago. Martor to set them up. Still two more plays after this. Look at the physicality in that tackle. Tiakaranga Katoa involved. And now Taryn Aiken trying to spot a hole. Closed successfully by Biddle in that back row roll. And now Upton down a short side. And New Zealand stand tall defensively early on. Well, they're ready to pounce the Gillaroos. The Kiwi Ferns, they did a great job to absorb back-to-back -back sets. A lot of pressure on their line, but you can just see the intent from the Gillaroos looking to use the ball, potentially even tire out the Kiwi Ferns a little bit, but they're ready to pounce, that's for sure. Yeah, they look really quick. I just think there's a couple of times where a couple of players have missed their assignment, and that's where those errors have come from. But looking very willing to move the footy and the Kiwis' defence up to the challenge in the first few minutes. And it's good evening to Billy Slater. How are these conditions? Yeah, conditions are really good down here, Speedy. Uh, there's a bit of breeze around, and as you can see from the, the kickoff from the Gillaroos, it's favouring the Australians in this first half. It's coming from from the northwest, right behind. Uh, the Australian team, so uh, the Kiwi girls are put under a lot of pressure, but uh, I think that's going to be the case for the next 40 minutes with this breeze behind the Australians. Brooke Anderson is the dummy half. Thanks to Georgia Hale. Trying to stand her ground, but finished off strongly. Samama Taufer and Brown in the tackle. McGregor pass a little behind her. Awkward for the playmaker for the Kiwis. As a result, Upton back towards halfway. That's a really strong place to start your set. Just getting the ball in the 40 metre line and starting just on this side of halfway. A nice little offload. Second phase footy, they're on here. Aiken cuts out one, goes to Izzy Kelly. Free running Izzy Kelly. And eventually taken down by Roach in company with Biddle. But inside the red zone already, the Gillaroos. Brown to Taufa. Capable of striking on either side, the Gillaroos. They go right this time. Here comes Upton. Little touch pass onto Whitfield, the debutante. And she gets away from that sideline as well. Upton was about to get nailed, wasn't she? Tipped it on cleverly. Just that sweet play from Tamika Upton. And they've coughed it up here, a knock on. You can see that there are going to be opportunities around Tamika Upton. If the, if the right option isn't for her to get it in space and run, they're almost over committing on Tamika Upton, which means there'll be space probably on the inside, but if not on the outside, when they just jam in and try and close her up.
almost 12 months since these teams squared off in the World Cup final at Old Trafford in Manchester. And Australia romped to victory there after a narrow win in the pool stages of that World Cup. And they face off twice here in the space of two weeks as well in the Pacific Championships. It's Nevada George who was elevated to the starting lineup today by their coach Ricky Henry and from inside the 40 McGregor finds a Early nice angle well. here and oh, will get the yes. footy back 40 30. if you're 40, looking 30. for a way to turn momentum towards you that's it fourth tackle kick into the wind 30k Norwester she just drilled that absolutely beautifully good inside pressure there's significant pressure on her from the Jillaroos but she's just got that ability and that knack to thread the footy and that's why she's a reigning golden boot. Yeah, that's the prize for the best player in the world in 2022, won by Racine McGregor. Dragons halfback involved again here. Crash play for Anessa Biddle. She got to hold her feet for so long, eventually finished off by Aiken over the top. And now Georgia Hale, New Zealand looking to put on a pet play. Hufunga looms. Instead, it's the back rower, Atessa Paulay, taking them on. Nathan Wong fires it back to Hale. And here's George to set them up. Two more plays remaining after that thrilling 40-30 for New Zealand. Anderson showed left, but uh, went right to the open side. Here comes R.P. Nichols. And another knock on, I think, off Abigail Roach. It will be Australia's footy. That is a shame. I, you can sort of see what the Kiwi Ferns are attempting to do. They just want to punch it down Ali. one side of the post and they want to try and shift it out. If they can get it to Anessa Biddle, she can draw in Taryn Aiken and hold her in there. See how Taryn Aiken bites in there because she got interested in Biddle and that creates a little bit more space. Execution, slightly off. The idea is sound for the Kiwi Ferns though. Defence on top Break. early on with standing. Good ball from both teams in the opening 10 minutes here. Ultra, Olivia Koenig of the Roosters almost played that a bit skew if. Got away with it. Loz Brown, who was the number seven for the Titans, run to the grand final, playing as the dummy half here. And Martor. No Elliston alongside her in the starting lineup today with Jess dropping back to the bench this time. Brigham Shaw throwing dummies. Well, this is where the Kiwis need to be careful. This is where the Jillaroos scored their first try in a very similar position a couple of weeks ago. Aiken seeing plenty of it. And there's Clydesdale back on the left edge. Short side. Poor Aiken. Little chip over the top. Ross to take it safely. It's Racine McGregor. What about that contact? It's Leanne Tafunga. And now Hufunga. And don't forget it's a double header tonight at Amy Park. New Zealand against Australia in the men's as well. Superstars everywhere you look in back-to-back -back fixtures here in Melbourne tonight. All coming your way on nines. Wide world of sports. McGregor from outside the 40 this time. And Whitfield was back in position to receive. And she's dangerous in this situation. Well, this is her strength. Alana spoke about her work coming out of backfield. She's got the ability to break at least the first tackle, and she's got the strength to pull through the next couple. So she definitely helps the Jillaroos get their sets off to good starts. Look at where they are. Tackle two. Now, speaking of one-two punch, isn't that nice? Whitfeld into Jess Smurgis. Would be handy. Also is this. Taufa. <laughs> they want to keep going that way. New Zealand trying to number up, but Aiken spotted something and floats it over the top for Chapman against Nichols, so powerful. What a finish from Jamie Chapman, one of the stars of the NRLW Grand Final at the start of the month.
great vision from Taryn Aiken on that short side, but they had all the momentum, the Gillaroos. A couple of really good hit-ups from their outside backs in Whitfeld and then Jess Surges, Samaima Taufa had a wonderful run through the middle and that just earned them that quick play the ball. And then it was Taryn Aiken with the footy in her hands right now to see that the winger came in. Firstly, to make the call that the short side was on. She wanted the footy. She demanded the football and then just identifying that the winger had come in and to get the footy to that woman there, Jamie Chapman, so powerful, so strong to go over. Great footy, but great recognition from the little 5'8". Yeah, it certainly was. And that little play through the middle, Shannon Marto with the tip on to Samaima Telfa, who then punches down that left edge, that draws that number in. If, we get an, if you have another look at the high shot, you'll be able to see it. You can actually see when Taryn Aiken identifies, she's only got three defenders in front of her. She screams for the footy and she gets the ball to the person that needs it. You see here, she knows. That's why she squares up and throws this lovely floater straight over the top. That is perfect, perfect pass selection from Taryn Aiken. I reckon they could have almost scored twice then. That inside ball to Tamika Upton, the defence, she was running at a back there. She would have been in space too. So they almost had options in front of them. She, ch she chose the right one. It led to a try, but Tamika on the inside pass, that's on too. Brown's conversion oh is over. tries in five tests now for Jamie Chapman. Both of the wingers from the World Cup final unavailable. Julia Robinson is out and Ivania Politi as well but uh, haven't we got some depth Australian rugby league in the wing positions? I certainly do. So Jakai Whitfeld on debut today. Tegan Berry was also called into the spot so and I think that's just rewards for two players have had incredible NRLW seasons. Chapman scored that hat-trick in the grand final, of course, against Newcastle. Um, oh, apps. apps. And the fullback, not too far behind the line, made great contact there, Arpy Nichols. Oh, it was really nice footwork from Kezi, just before contact, skip out of that first tackle break. What a determined ball runner Yasmin Clydesdale is. Look how quick she gets up to play it as well. Didn't play oh, it hang all on. that well. Referee turned a blind eye, could have gone all the way, I suppose, and now New Zealand benefit ultimately after another drop ball from the Aussies. Probably earned that one and they've earned a penalty off the back of it too, just hanging on too long, the Gillaroos. Our referee is Belinda Sharp, who also took charge of the World Cup final between these two. Gave away that penalty and make that tackle count on Anessa Biddle. Barter George. Oh, trying to force an offload out the back, and that's deemed a knock on by the referee. Yeah, that one looked untidy. I think this is where the Kiwis just need to have a little bit of patience. They don't need to force these offloads. It's not, they're in really good field position here, and even though Nevada George is known for that offload. We've seen throughout the start of this game, the Gillaroos have been putting numbers in tackles on her to try and shut that down. So just a little bit of patience from the Kiwis when they get into good ball, I think, is what coach would be sending down as a message. I think that last shot showed the experience of Samaima Taufa too. She, she knows she's good for an offload. Here she is. Upton, oh, fabulous. Oh. Oh. And then was shaping for the pass to Whitfield, trying to position her flyer and lost control. Oh no. She will not yeah, forget that moment. Unfortunately, we'll probably go to sleep for the next few weeks thinking about that because they were on for all money. But it just goes to show how dangerous Tamika Upton can be with that tiny opportunity. Oh, just a little bobble thought about the pass it was on to. But she's a danger. They've done a pretty good job up until that point at containing Tamika Upton with a few of her late sweeps. But oh, she's Let's dangerous in space. Fuck off. Yep. She'll be giving Mele Hufunga nightmares as well. 
after running around it in Townsville and getting the better of the New Zealand centre on that occasion. Just then as well. Watch this space throughout this match. Watch Melio come back on the grain, spot her up in the middle of the field. <laughs> Written up today as the one who got away for New Zealand rugby, Mele Hufunga. That was the headline across the ditch today about the powerhouse centre for the Kiwi Ferns, who's played rugby union for Tonga, of course. Rules are out of playing for New Zealand in the future. Here's Anderson taking on her opposite number. Hale deputises at dummy half to find Nathan Wong for the kick. Into that breeze, and again, Targeting Whitfield. Jakaya comes back into the middle. Just 22 years of age, just signed a life-changing deal to join the North Queensland Cowboys for the next three years. And I think she, she couldn't get a start at Newcastle. And she goes down to the Tigers. Well, she has an incredible Harvey Norman season, the New South Wales competition, and then has an incredible NRLW. And she's playing for the Jillaroos not 12 months later. Amazing. Talked a lot about one of the great humans of the world as she called her Talisha Harden, who helped make that move materialise to North Queensland. Flat ball from Brigginshaw to Koenig, giving the all clear. Flat is kind. <laughs> Aiken. Oh, trying to thread Clydesdale through a hole that wasn't really there. George swings into action, third player in, and Yazzie still. She's still going. And look, she. It left three people on the deck. Aiken goes high this time. Down towards RP Nichols. In the end goal oh, now. Safe take. take. Means a seven tackle set. Starting with a 20 metre tap. Geez, that was good by RP Nichols. You could just see her inching closer and closer, keeping an eye on the defence, keeping an eye on where the ball was. It was falling into that bit of like shade and sun where it meets. And she timed it perfectly. Another role for Shanice Parker today. She's played centre, fullback, and wing in the last three weeks and starts with the five on her back today. We're just admiring this run by Yasmin Clydesdale again. Look at her go. She's, she's so like good. a Clydesdale. She just keeps pulling through. She's so good. She's one of my favourite players this oh, NRLW season. Actually, probably the last couple of seasons, to be fair. Keeps winning the comp. Wherever Yazzie is is where the silverware winds up. First with the Roosters and then... With the Knights back to back. Ball oh, stripped out seal. one on one by Jess Sergis, who's got that in her locker. Yeah, it's one of her pet plays. She was in the tackle with Kezzy Apps, and there would have been communication there for sure to tell Kez just to drop off. Get that steal, sets them up for an epic attacking opportunity here. How relaxed was Jess Sergis in the chat with Billy Slater? Free game as well. Yeah, it's great to see her getting a little bit more confidence. She's been a great player for so long and had great impact, but such a role model in our game. Upton trying to create something for the other centre, Kelly. Just calling the shots to Mika as she goes into dummy half. Fires it back to Aiken. They want to get to centre field at least here. Brigginshaw might go further than that. In fact, Sergis turned underneath and breaks tackles, Jess. That's another play that works really well with Jess Sergis with her ability and her, her strength. Turning her back under. She's got great footwork too on the last here. Brigginshaw. Oh. Still Brigginshaw. Oh. And which way did that go? It's alive for New Zealand. Backwards off George. She's, they just opened up straight through the back behind that ruck there. And Ali Brigginshaw, she almost took advantage of it. How good's that from Olivia Koenig? Getting to Mele Hufunga first and helping out our outside backs. Yeah, well, that, that's the key is to smother her, not let Mele Hufunga earn any kind of momentum because once she gets up foot speed, she has proven to be so hard to stop. So they've done a really good job so far on Hufunga. Roach, one of those Newcastle Premiership winners in this New Zealand lineup today. And alongside Shanice Parker, her Knights teammate, out on that right edge. Had their hands full so far with Kelly and Chapman with ball in hand. Nathan Wong floats one down towards Upton. How often does she get there on the full? Uses Whitfield this time. Tackle technique, Brooke Anderson. 
She's a wonderful defender, Brooke Anderson. On bigger bodies, on smaller bodies, she very rarely gets it wrong. And that was a really good chase by her there too. Kelly, so much room to move. No line speed for New Zealand, who have to be weary. They've been on the back foot throughout this first half. This is when those plays coming back against the grain and changing your angles can be really damaging. Australia asking for some quicker play the balls. Koenig surges somehow holds on in contact. And we'll play it again. So quick with her play the balls. Now Koenig looking to set up Upton. Still Olivia Koenig. Where's the support? There it is. Upton is over. And has she scored? I think she might have done. What a remarkable try from the Gillaroos. Koenig and Upton combining. Well, when you see this one back on replay, you'll see she didn't think she was going to get this football. It came to her and all she did was just spot up. Excuse me. And she's like thinking Ali Brigginshaw swinging to the open side. She gets the football. There's slightly, a little bit slow on that defensive line there for the Kiwi Ferns, but it's just push support that makes this play come to life. Loz Brown jumps out, but look at Kerning, just keeping the ball in two hands. You can see it takes the attention from Brooke Anderson. The defense isn't able to get there. She keeps those long levers free and the freaky Miki is just screaming up through the inside. They really Did she had, lose it? Yeah, she might have. They really had no right to score that. They didn't have numbers out there on that edge. They probably shouldn't have gone to the short side. It was just that support play, if it did pay off, although we might get another look. I don't think it's being confirmed just yet. But they had no right. <sighs> Koenig having the footy in two hands and just going through, it's probably just the difference between that extra bit of effort. They didn't have line speed that whole set, New Zealand. Here we go, we might hear it. Yeah, we're going to have another look yeah. at this one. That's probably fair. Tries under review, just looking at maintaining possession. In real time, I thought it would be amazing for Upton to finish this off with Nichols straight all over it. Yeah, it's the work of Arpy Nichols over the top. We've cleared all, play, it. all aspects of play up until this point. There, she loses that. Just yeah. looking at possession from Tamika Upton. That's a no try. Tamika Upton loses possession while the New Zealand player has maintained contact with the ball, which is a knock-on decision made. Well, that's another huge play from Arpi Nichols. The first one when she caught the ball in goal, and it was a tricky catch, and then a huge defensive play on Tamika Upton. Yeah, it'll be a no try. But that's a real shot across the bow, though, because, like you said, Alana, that, they had no right to get over the try line there. And it was just the fact that the Kiwis stayed on their heels defensively and allowed the space for Koenig to take that, get that line speed up, get the arms free. So that's a real warning shot there. Last tackle. Yeah, they oh, look out. Your fave just come on the field. Hill Moana. Maya Hill Moana. Come on. No, thank you. I think the conversation in... New Zealand right now needs to be that line speed. Obviously, they have to get out of the danger zone and try and return the football up the other end of the field, but their line speed needs to pick back up. Having a look at this, Nichols against Upton. And I reckon Upton was saying, hang on a minute, if you're watching these replays, was I being tackled before I got the footy there by Arpy Nichols that affected her try scoring potential? I'd have to have another look. It was uh, Liam Kennedy in the bunker, and I think Tamika might have a point. Oh. Poor play the ball just onto the ground. Jasmine Fongavini offering up great field position again for Australia. Well, this is what they can ill afford to do here because they've been under significant pressure in the first 20 minutes of this game. The Gillaroos have had the best line speed defensively as well. They've been getting up in their face, and they can't afford to make errors like this in the play the ball. They can't gift easy possession. And off a set play here, I'd be looking at Aiken and Upton as big dangers. Chapman's pretty handy to run onto a ball as well from Aiken. Only try scorer so far, Jamie Chapman, the left winger. Now Apps, entitled to a quick play the ball after a run like that, achieves it for Brown, and now Aiken. Oh! <laughs> Fonga Vinny's a wonderful defender, finished the job. Now Brown has been so deceptive with her dummy half play close to the try line in recent times for the Titans and then Australia. 
pass behind Upton. Now Brigginshaw. Another pass hits the deck. Whitfield playing it cleverly. But on the back foot a little here, the Aussies. It is the last here for Brown to kick this time. And Parker safe underneath it. Jillaroos have gone to their bench as well. Jess Alliston on the field. Her and Shannon Marta will be recombining. What a good run. Abigail Rhodes, she is so athletic and so powerful. There's Brown spun out the back. They'll check on that for an HIA, but it looks like she was OK. I think she's all right. But she's made 15 big tackles through the middle so far, Los Brown. Again, it's Olivia Koenig with the first contact on Mele Hufunga. Well, that, that would have been her job coming into this game. Brad Donald would have said, right, you need to get up in Mello Hufunga's face. You can't be letting her run at Ali Brigginshaw and you need to shut down her space. And that would have been one of her biggest jobs coming into today. New Zealand have done so well pushing into this strong wind here at Amy Park to stay within one converted try at the moment. Yeah, they sure have. But again, the Jillaroos get to start their set just on the other side of halfway. So it's a pretty dangerous spot to turn the ball over, but you're right, only six points behind on the scoreboard. They've done a great job. Okay, stand up. Here is Jess Elliston. You provide that impact off the bench after being a starter. The last time the Jillaroos went around. That was her debut in Townsville. Upton running behind a teammate, but no obstruction. Not how the Jillaroos drew that one up. Aiken's kick out towards Chapman's side. Oh, had to wait a long time, Shanice Parker, and I think knocked on by Chapman. Yep, knock on. Knock on Australia first. Hand over, out here. It nearly looked good, didn't it? Jamie Chapman Play the ball. powering onto the ball like that. But that was a pretty flat set from the Jillaroos. Two in a row where they haven't had a lot of depth in attack and probably haven't made the most of the territory that they've had. Given it is only 6-0, that could be a part of the game, this 10-minute period where they might have wanted to pick up some more points. And the wind's going to change. New Zealand are going to have the wind at their back in the second half. So... If I were them, I'd be looking to find at least six more heading into half time. Parker got away with that one there, didn't she? Electing to stay grounded. Chapman nearly jumped over the top of her for another try. So strong Georgia Hale. Made 86 tackles in the first two weeks of the Pacific Championships. Pass out in front of McGregor, did well to hold on. And now Good space play. opening up for Nichols. And tripped up by Upton with Brigginshaw getting there as well. Just couldn't quite link with Hufunga. One of the best moments in attack for New Zealand so far. This kick works pretty well too. Parker tried to flick it up for Roach. And that went forward. Well, that was how they scored their first try in the first game against the Jillaroos. That crossfield kick by Ray McGregor. But I loved that raid down the left edge. That little play with Uppy Nichols sliding around the back there. That's gold. Jillaroos have brought Emma Tornagato for a little bit of impact off the bench. But you're right, I think RP Nichols and Racine McGregor, they're the two that really look like they're sparking this Kiwi Fern side at the moment. They're the two players that can sort of change momentum. Tornagato will probably play the rest of the game in that roving role for Brad Donald. Did the same thing in the first test match between these two. Clydesdale trying to turn it into some sort of positive at the end of this play, but had no room to move. And now looking to play it too quickly. Yeah, that one there, you can just see she got a little impatient trying to get up as quick as she could and plants the ball down. You can't plant the footy, you have to get up on your own steam. So this one, this time here, now we're going to see the Kiwis get the football in genuinely the best start to their set that we've probably seen for them. Midfield scrum they're opting for. They've got plenty of pace out wide. And they've got the strength of Hufunga as well. Oh, Brad Donald looks a little bit nervous, doesn't he? The Jillaroos coach. I think he's with you. 
feels like they should have more points on the board by this stage of the game. Maybe a little perplexed by that decision against Clydesdale. It was being locked up by Racine McGregor. And now the penalty goes to New Zealand for not getting off the tackled player. Yeah, I think that's probably fair. You see how they tried to shut down Mela Hufunga there. Touch, Four yeah. women in the tackle. Which again, it opens up opportunities either side of her. But it just goes to show how hard she is to handle and how big a threat they've identified Mela Hufunga to be. Can they set her up now inside the red zone? New Zealand's best opportunity to answer that early Gillaroos try from Jamie Chapman. Strong defence on Fonga Vinny. From the Brisbane Broncos. Now McGregor. Fullback chimes in again. Biddle running straight. It's a strong run. Kelly there to meet her front on. Anderson goes short side. Nichols. Looking dangerous, isn't she, RP Nichols? But look at the work of Kelly defensively, and they ran out of room, New Zealand. Yeah, that, that short side play wasn't on there. It needed to come back to the open side. They needed to punch it maybe just to the outside of the left upright or swing it all the way to Mela Hufunga to come back against the grain. But jumping the short side there, that, that wasn't on. The Jillaroos had numbers, they had line speed. Have a look at Isabel Kelly here, yeah. just making sure that she holds RP Nichols up. That was her intention the entire time. She made really good early contact with RP Nichols and knew that physically she could keep her upright and they just drove her right out. Very intelligent edge defence from the Jillaroos. Sergis is having an amazing oh, game. Look at it go. Not held, Jess Sergis. And on Cox Plate Day in Melbourne, the lady nicknamed Winks is having a stormer here. Tomagato for Aiken. Off the back of that Surges run, Australia look to go to work on the other side. Oh, Kelly in agony. Shoulder may be an issue there. Backed it somewhere further down the arm. Yeah, it looked awkward when she went to ground. Kennedy Cherrington on, looming in support there, trying to make something happen. They're headed back Kelly's side here. Oh, Clydesdale lost the footy, and that's happened a lot for these Jillaroos in the first half. Ball security has been an issue. Scrum in the middle. It has been. They're still they're punching holes, but they've just not come up with the reward for the back end of the work that they've been putting in. Just search. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Izzy, that looked... No wonder she grimaced. That looked very uncomfortable. But Jess Sergis on this right edge is really troubling Mela Hufunga. Her speed, her strength, her ability to pull through those tackles is really, really worrying her. And then when you've got Tamika Upton doing the same thing, it's a good little punch. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be targeting one of those inside runs on Mela Hufunga. You can use both Tamika and Jess Sergis to do it. She's dangerous and she's powerful, but there is that little bit of fatigue in her game. And if you pounce at the right time, you can get her in defence for sure. I think that the defence from the Kiwis has been outstanding, particularly on some of their danger players. Yasmin Clydesdale, they've shut her down and forced errors out of her. Right up the middle, Georgia Hale. 35-minute halves, NRLW rules, of course, in the Pacific Championship. So closing in on half-time here. Both coaches will be delighted with the defence that their teams have displayed. I'm hoping their attack can really click into gear in the second half. Again, a kick right onto the chest of Upton, who will use Whitfield once more. How strong has Biddle been in any role she's asked to play by her coaches? Clydesdale going to weave a passage through. Tiana Davison just on. Third player in on that tackle. Upton. Short ball for Koenig. That combination again. And is there a touch off New Zealand? It remains late in the tackle count for Australia, says Belinda Sharp. Yeah, she just gestured that it was backwards off Australia, but I thought it was a touch. Oh, oh. Sergis had Whitfield, but again, the pass misses the mark. I 
thought that was a catchable one for Whitfield, though. It was it was out in front of her. She probably just mis misjudged how quickly it came out of the hands there. But this right edge attack, especially out wide, really worrying the Kiwi Ferns. You can see them just isolating defenders really well. Is that strong win that Billy told us about any excuse for some of the uh, finishes to set so far for the Jillaroos and the mistakes that Brad Donnell won't be happy about. The completion rate is uh, 6 out of 13. Yeah, they, they wouldn't be accepting, as a, accepting it as an excuse, I don't think. And I think that completion rate, especially because it was a focus for the Jillaroos coming into today, will be heavily spoken about at halftime. In spite of that, they've had, had nearly 60% of possession. Well, they've had probably four genuine missed opportunities for points. That's probably why he looked as, as nervous as he did when we popped up on the screen a few minutes ago. McGregor, oh, no look at. Harpy Nichols was chiming into the back line and overlap was being created on that right-hand side, but it went to Biddle. McGregor trying to cause some chaos with this kick, and she has done. How's the bounce? New Zealand a little late firing through and Upton got away with letting it bounce and uses Whitfeld once more. Well, that was probably a real representation of what the wind can do with the football. It just moved away from Tamika Upton because... Oh, what a strip! Oh. Tiana Davison! What a contribution off the bench from the 22-year-old. Another championship winner with the Newcastle Knights. She had a cracking season for them too. Nichols. Australia have to be on guard here. New Zealand looking to hit back right before half time. Back to centre field with Fonga Vini. Will they be able to set it up for Hufunga on one of these next two plays? They've got a deep line to the right. Which they don't use. And Very flat on the left here, though. And she's out of play here. Yeah, number seven has to play the ball on the last, so they go to that left-hand side. Nathan Wong trying to set it up for Hufunga. Oh, there it is! Oh, Mele Hufunga! Unstoppable as the Jillaroos switch off and pay the price. Well, Tiana Davison, take a bow. Coming off the bench five minutes before half-time, she came on with an incredible, incredible steal one-on-one -on -one here. That was perfect. Textbook. But then this is the pet play for the Kiwis. And this is what we've spoken about. You clock off on the inside there. You see they don't tie in. And the space is created. Mela Hufanga is so strong. You can't give her that half sniff. She makes you pay. What a finish to the first half here at Amy Park. Mele Hufunga, we all knew where it was headed. Nathan Wong teed it up beautifully, but Australia had no answers. Well, you just see there, that shot probably shows doesn't show it as well as a high shot would. But you can see the defender gets really interested on Tyler Nathan Wong, and that's what opens that space up back on the inside. And Mele Hufunga is so strong, so strong in that position. She very rarely misses, and... Ray McGregor, she's looking to add the extras. And locks it up. Beautifully executed conversion from Racing McGregor, who's had a tremendous first 35 minutes. So game on in Melbourne. All locked up at the break at six apiece. So can Australia be more clinical, finishing off their sets? So many opportunities in that first 35. But we're all locked up at the start of the second half and trapped cleverly by Brigginshaw. Allowing Australia to get outside of their own red zone through Kennedy Cherrington. And look out for the one-on-one -on -one strips. There were several in that first half, including a game-changing one from Tiana Davison. Yeah, Jess Sergis came up with a great one as well. But that one definitely turned the game in the favour of the Kiwis before half-time by Tiana Davison. Lights down. 
Such a threat on that left edge throughout the opening half. Brown has been the dummy half throughout. Still no sign of the debutante Emma Manzelman, but look out for her in that role at some stage in this second half. Elliston. That's Australia just inside the 30. Late in their first set in the second half. Aiken to go high and float it down towards Harpy Nichols. It was tremendous. And an Aussie was called out of it. Emma Tonagato had jumped the gun and didn't hear what the referee was saying. Got involved in the tackle. Yeah, I heard that call come through from Belinda Sharp, just calling Emma out, saying she was within the 10. There's a gift out of trouble here for the Kiwis. And Ray McGregor bites off a nice 15, 16 metres. Her kicking game is going to be very threatening this half with the wind. I'm assuming that there's been no changes. She already had a great kicking game in that first half. So the fact that she's got that behind her back, particularly if she sets up as she normally does on this right side, it'll really be behind her to drill into that back left corner. Tiana Davison, good run and a nice little offload too. I've been impressed with her NRLW season, Tiana Davison, earning this Kiwi Ferns call up. And may not have been in the team if not for the unfortunate injury to Amalia Pasakala last week. A dislocated ankle in the end for Amalia, so we wish her well in the rehab. Nevada George, who started in the front row, has moved out to the edge and a reshuffle from their coach, Ricky Henry, here. And Sue Funga, the try scorer. And here is McGregor's kicking game. Down towards Tamika Upton. Safe take from Australia's fullback. Yeah, really safe take. Good kick chase as well. They were up there, didn't let Tamika Upton find any leg speed in any space. It was a good finish to the set from the Kiwis. Georgia Hale with that tackling technique really working over Jamie Chapman there. Teammate there. She's already made 27 tackles. That was probably tackle 28, Georgia Hale. She's an incredible defender. Clydesdale was complaining about a high tackle there, but given the all clear, here's Tonicato combining with Cherrington centre field. Scored two tries in that World Cup final. Kennedy tipped on cleverly by Tonicato through the hands of Koenig to Sergis. Winding up his chest. So strong and thought about forcing it out the back. Held on. Wow. Well, that shows the class of Emma Tonegato being in the middle and just helping that thread through to the edge. Brigham Shaw's kick, who wants it? Bounces off a and Kiwi, offside. that's offside. So do Australia take the two here? Well, Belinda had two opportunities to penalise there. I think Ray McGregor changed her line and stood in front of the Gillaroo's chaser and Anessa Biddle, unfortunately, comes off a teammate and she's in front of that teammate and picks Penalty. the ball up. Tap or kick but here, the Gillaroo's opting... Pump. Would you break the deadlock here and take the gift too? Personally, I would, because I think the Gillaroos have been rolling through their sets really clinically, and I think they'd get back into this field position pretty well. Their only thoughts are for a four-pointer. Oh, Cherrington finished off strongly. My Fonga Vinny is a tackling machine as well. Right out to Brigginshaw, Koenig for Upton, intercepts! Taken by the Kiwis, and Upton drags her back in time, but... What a, another oh, turning point. She went point. for a steal too, Speedy. And not given the footy. Had to hand it back. Well, that was purely because of how they were trying to defend Tamika Upton. Getting up, putting pressure on her, trying to pluck her off, and then being in the right position to take that intercept. Leanne to Funga. Amazing. And now to the other side for Parker to find the player outside of her. Worked beautifully. Oh, good shot. <laughs> Little one. Two punch with Ash Quinlan, who's come on playing on the wing at the moment. And here is her role. Back up dummy half. She was out there on the right wing, outside of Parker. Now Hale, trying to eye out the defence. Trying to create something here for Hufunga. Oh, Uppy. Uppy Nichols is through. Australia already complaining about an obstruction, but for now... 
The Kiwis are in front. Well, you can take this one all, all the way back to the other end of the field. Leanne Tafunga came up with that pour out, came up with a beautiful intercept, getting up in the face of Tamika Upton. But Arpi Nichols has been threatening all afternoon. This play through the middle is set up by Georgia Hale. She is so direct, so direct. She squares up nicely and that holds up the defence. They can't shift off. Billy, that must have looked nice down on ground level. Yeah, it certainly did. Arpi Nichols, she held the ball in two hands, which created the one-on-one. -on -one with Ali Brigginshaw and, and then she was just too strong through the hips, powered through that tackle. And they've gone 90 metres, the Kiwi Ferns. And it was a big decision not to take the two points from the Chillaroos. I think they'll be regretting that moment. Uh, they'll be regretting it all right. They could have taken the two points to put them ahead on the scoreboard, but Georgia Hale does a great job to straighten up. I like how the Kiwis play when they're attacking their line. They start a little bit tighter, closer to the play the ball. And then their last thought is that late movement onto the outside of their defender. RP Nichols, as Billy said, the footy in two hands, just forcing them to sit back on their heels. They were worried about Mele Hufunga, but they might be having a look at this. Yeah, Australia were adamant this try should not stand. You saw Tamika Upton waving her finger. I think it's the lead runner on Brigginshaw affecting her ability to defend and ultimately she's the one beaten. It is. It's it's the lead runner for Ray McGregor here. I think it's uh, oh, Nevada George. Nevada George. Nevada George. This point. She catches it on the inside shoulder. Sorry, it's Tyler Nathan Wong. Catches it on the inside shoulder of Nevada George and then she takes it to the outside. And it The New Zealand play the catches the ball on the inside shoulder of the lead runner and causes a disadvantage to the defensive line. We have a decision. So we remain at six apiece here. Yeah, it might be disallowed, but doesn't don't they make that look easy though? Slice through it, hot knife, soft butter comes to mind. Penalty. Well, they got the territory Penalty. quickly, which is the dangerous part. You have a look okay. at this depth and just the way that the halves combine, Georgia Hale finds them. And then their strike fullback in RP Nichols. They had Mele Hufunga. Their shape looked very dangerous. A big welcome now to our New South Wales and Victorian viewers joining us on nine. And we're at a fascinating stage of this Pacific Championships encounter between Australia and New Zealand all locked up. The bunker has taken a try off both teams in this game so far and uh, they've taken a little while to get around to those decisions too. Yeah, they have. It's been a really close encounter that first half. The Gillaroos had the upper hand, hand and only found six points. And then just that punch back from the Kiwis just before half time. What a great game of rugby league it's been. Another pass on the deck, swooped upon by Abigail Roach here. Well, that was really good competitiveness there by Abigail Roach. Not willing to just let that one go to ground and will set up for a scrum. She dove on it, got her team on the front foot. And again, Georgia Hale is getting to work through the middle. So Nevada George, whose lead run had that try chalked off a moment ago. Taken down. And now Hale off the back of it. Every tackle a contest here between the Gillaroos and Kiwi Ferns. McGregor, Nichols, right-hand side for Roach. And Kelly and Aiken see off that threat of the hat-trick scorer from last week against Tonga. Flat ball again from McGregor to Fongavini. Racine was just intent on getting into position for this play, which is the last and receives from Davison to go crossfield. We'll find the grass. How's the bounce? It's a Gillaroos bounce. Yeah, she put a little bit too much on that, Racine McGregor. Just remember, she has the, the wind middle. at her back, so probably needs to just make sure that that one sits up a little bit more because it is quite a powerful breeze behind the Kiwis for this second half of footy. <laughs> Jamie yeah, Chapman. Australia's try scorer today, but look at those numbers being put up by Jess Sergis today. Yeah, they just get a penalty out of their own end, the Gillaroos. Jess Sergis has been immense. Her carries out of the back end have been huge for the Gillaroos. Olivia Koenig not far off as well. 
making some of those tough yards. But the key for the Gillaroos has got to be to clean up their errors. They were completing at 37% in the first half. They were all over the Kiwis until that last try just before half time. They just need to find that polish on the back end of their sets. But credit to the Kiwis' defence. They're putting them under all sorts of pressure. And a debut for Emma Manzelman off the bench in that dummy half roll. Congratulations to her, the 21-year-old from the North Queensland Cowboys. Goes to Brigginshaw on an angle. Koenig, who's been racking up the numbers today, as you saw. Manzelman is a live wire in a dummy half as well. Look out for her runs. Oh, no look pass. And it hits the deck off Clydesdale, Australia. Really chancing their arm. And uh, it's not coming off for Brad Donald's side, who are on a 14-game winning streak under this coach. No, that one wasn't on back on the inside there. I think it probably would have been better off just taking that tackle. She had the speed going in. She probably would have won the contact. But here, just from watching this on first look, it looked like it was a head clash. It didn't look like it was anything untoward in it. I could be wrong. Yeah, just a head clash there. Ray McGregor and Emma Tonegato coming together. They'll both get checked out. Tono's nose is gone there, surely. <laughs> Again, I think she did it a couple of times during the NRLW season. Surely she looks pretty good. Racine McGregor being ordered off here for the next 15 minutes go. at least we'll by the referee who was tipped up by the bunker. Well, they've got Ash Quinlan, Bring her on. who was playing on the wing for a little bit. She was there 14 off the bench, so they'll probably put her in the halves with Tyler Nathan Wong, I would assume, Rue. Yeah, I think that uh, Quinlan will come on. She came off after Let's a few go. minutes, so there must have been an HIA to Abigail Roach. So Abigail came back on, and Ash has been an excellent half for the Raiders this year. She's had an incredible NRLW year. So she'll slot in there, I'd assume, with Nathan Wong. Yeah, there she is, a dummy half at the moment. Brooke Anderson will come on and play that role. So Quinlan, who started in the halves with Racine McGregor a fortnight ago before Nathan Wong came on to play in that role will soon be in the halves. Yeah, they've got a quite a handy bench, actually. Brooke Anderson could equally jump in there and play that role, but Ash Quinlan, who's played her NRLW this season in the halves, should do a great job for the Kiwi Ferns. There is Anderson. And Hufunga right alongside. Tucked the ball down awkwardly and did well to hold on, really, as three Gillaroos swamped Melak. One converted try apiece. It was 16-10 in Townsville a fortnight ago. New Zealand haven't beaten Australia since 2016, but the upset is on here. Nichols finds her kicker, Tyler Nathan Wong. Headed towards that sideline. Australia looked confident it was going out in the full, and that's what you have with no racing McGregor now, a different kicker. Yeah, again, the wind is at Tyler Nathan Wong's back there and she was facing the sideline. So as well as having the wind behind her, her body language and her setup play was always directing the footy that way. But Racine McGregor is their specialist kicker. We still see Tyler Nathan Wong take some kicks. That was a lovely offload from Emma Tornagado. But Racine McGregor is their specialist kicker. So they'll certainly be missing her while she's getting tested and going through the HIA protocols. Haven't Tonegado and Kennedy Charrington combined nicely already on multiple occasions, the two interchange players. Now Taufa. Well, that's the thing. When you've got Emma Tonegado in the middle, you just have to push with her. You have to push around her because she creates so much. She's got ball playing ability and the leg speed is incredible. Hanselman gets there. Back to Charrington. Kennedy Charrington spotted a hole that closed just as quickly. Maya Hill Mawada. Strong defence, but a quick play the ball. Aiken. Oh, squeezed the kick through brilliantly to get a repeat set. Wow. Well, firstly, that was a lovely pass from Emma Manzelman from dummy half. Really quick, really crisp service. And then the right option from Taryn Aiken. The Kiwis just diffused it really well. Just turning the footy over on the belly of the ball, which makes it really easy for the attacker, which is Isabel Kelly, to dive and just get a hand on it and it's usually quite tricky but RP Nichols dealt with that brilliantly. The Gillaroos though they still get another crack. Winding up Samama Talfa all the way back to the 20. 
Yeah, so she'll be playing front row with Kennedy Cherrington and M. Tonegata will stay at lock. So they've got plenty of punch in there, the Gillaroos. And it's Hill Moana on Cherrington. And someone eventually finds Aiken. Oh, good read. Wow, how on earth did she find Kelly there? Quinlan was almost tackling her already. Oh. Now Aiken keeping it alive for Manselman. Oh, Kelly juggles it successfully. And Australia just need to settle down. They have not really been clicking inside the attacking red zone. Is now the time. Set to go right up. They upped and screaming for it to go that side. Manselman goes to Charrington. Can she force it out the back? Kennedy will have to hand it over. Did she know it was the last? Yeah, they knew it was the last. They were setting up for a specialist punch punch play through the middle there, but the Kiwis had numbered up perfectly. They knew exactly what was coming. They could they saw Kennedy Cherrington swing around and into that position, so they filled that gap really well. And that would have been the opportunity to shift it a little bit wider there for the Gillaroos and try and punch an edge. Yeah, I think in that instance it was should have been going to Ali Brigginshaw on that right edge. She has just surged us out there. She looked pretty keen to get the footy in her hands too. Upton was out there too. They were all screaming for it. Finds now third player in to slow down her fire. Hale getting a taste of her own medicine from Tonegato and Manzelman. Yakaranga Katoa, just 21 years of age, has just thrived on the international stage for the first time in the last three weeks. Kick came from Quinlan. And here's Jakaya Whitfield. Hasn't had a chance to really stretch out so far tonight, but there's still 20 minutes left in this ball game. And she might not have had a chance to stretch out, but that run that she just put in and the quick play, the ball off the back of it, allowed Jess Surgis to get close to 20 metres off the next run. And it sets up the Gillaroos for an incredible raid here. Australia attacking again here. We'll get an update on Racine McGregor in a moment. See what Australia can do with this good ball. Manselman goes short side for Tamika Upton and Sergis. Look at the footwork around Hufunga. Keeps it alive for Whitfield. The debutante against the grain. Oh! <laughs> right into a roadblock. And Nessa Biddle. What a hit. Whoa, welcome to international footy. Making it stick. And they keep going to that left-hand side for Aiken. How creative is her kicking game? And Whoa. Nichols forced to play at it. Wow. Well, she's done it again, Taryn Aiken. The perfect weight. A little bit of a wobbly kick, but again, it was the right option. And just testing up in Nichols, making those decisions. Here's that run from Ja'Kai Whitfeld and the tackle from Biddle. Sensational stuff. Stay on side. They do look dangerous on that right edge. I'd love to see them Stay get on. a little bit more footy Stay now on. that they get another crack, the Gillaroos, at attacking the line. Jess Sergis, Ja'Kai Whitfeld, two very hard players to defend against. Let's get that update with Zach. Speedy Racine McGregor's head knock has been classified as Category 2. She's currently in the dressing room undergoing assessment. We'll have an update for you shortly. Thank you, Zach. Hanselman to Taufa. They have to go right here, Australia. Brigginshaw wants it again. Manselman has heard the call. Goes to the captain. And now Sergis by the cutout ball. Corralled that time, Jess. I just need a little bit more depth on that right edge. Nathan Wong was slow to get up there. I hope she's all right. Everyone was slow to get up. Martor punches Australia back inside the 10 in her second stint. Aiken, ball in hand this time, Taryn. And Kelly flicks it back to Taryn Aiken to tidy up. What a pocket dynamo she is, Taryn Aiken. We'll play it on the last here. So her kicking game. Not here on the last. Manselman finds Brigginshaw instead for a trademark crossfield kick towards Whitfield side. Up they go. Who wants oh. it? <laughs> Leanne Tafunga is having a terrific game, and there's an offside penalty against Australia. You still made the tackle though, and you're inside 10. There you go. We got the explanation from Belinda Sharp.
That was a strong contest in the air, though. How strong is Leanne Tafunga? She's unbelievable. Oh, we know how we know how strong Jakai Whitfield is, but that is that's a good contest to keep an eye on. For the very first time, the NRL is heading to Vegas. Join us as Australia's most exciting sport is unleashed on the sports and entertainment capital. Rugby League unleashed in Las Vegas. Tickets on sale now. Visit nrl.com slash Vegas. A few mates watching you two at the Sphere. You can tie that in with the trip to Vegas. Take me to the Sphere. That place looks mental. service from Anderson to Hale Quinlan was that touched by Clydesdale yes it was spotted by Ruan Sims as well <laughs> almost took out the mic as our I was, very own as I was doing my hand movements my hand gestures I'm working on it for next year <laughs> Linda Sharp getting tipped up from everywhere including the commentary box Anderson floats one still finds a target in Nathan Wong but it was set up for Hale um, oh, knocked on in the end Double. well New Zealand really way. lost their way there. Way. Concern for Australia with uh, Yazzie Clydesdale. This one looked a little untidy here for the Kiwis. They weren't quite sure where they wanted to break that footy down, where they wanted to play the ball happening. And just in the contest here, it looks like Yazzie just gets landed on. It's always uncomfortable. But that was a good opportunity after a set restart, just gone begging for the Kiwis. Well, the game really is up for grabs. Six apiece. Both sides have done a pretty good job at just, just disrupting the rhythm of the opposition. So it's time for someone to put their hand up and make their mark on the game. Very similar to that pool game at last year's World Cup, won by the Gillaroos by 10 points to eight in the end. Another arm wrestle here between the two great rivals. Strong run. Angelina, out of him now. Wait, wait, wait. Shannon Martor provided it. Took Australia back inside the 30 and now inside the red zone via Taufa. And these superstar names find their groove in attack. Brigginshaw, Sergis, pops it out the back for Manzelman. Off the mark, look at the footwork creating here. The two debutants combine and Whitfield. Trying to force it down, New Zealand. How is that for desperation? Sums up their Wait, defensive effort. It's RP again. We're on tackle four. Have no try. Just confirm the ball is held up, please. Well, this is where Emma Manzelman is the most dangerous. Sniffing around broken ruck play. She's got the leg speed to take advantage Looking of it. Looking to see if there is a grounding from the Australian player. I think she's player. held up here, Jakai. She's denied on debut. RP Nichols. She's been... So good for the Kiwis out the back. Nathan Wong gets involved as well. Yep, the ball's up. Wow. That's an effort. That is a huge play. That is a huge play in this game. Usually we speak about big attacking The arm plays. is always under the ball. Just checking for all available angles. I'm not sure that we're going to see anything different. <laughs> Liam Kennedy slowing it down. Whitfield would have celebrated big time if she thought she'd scored a try. She's ready to play it. Yeah. Ten metres out here. And this just takes the, the wind out of the sails of the Gillaroos a little Based bit. Based on all available angles, the ball remains up. Decision made. There you go. No try. And this allows the Kiwis just to get their defensive line reset. Take a few deep breaths. Look how deep Australia are, ready to go to work here at Amy Park. Time on! Well, that's at least eight points that Arpi Nichols has single-handedly stopped. And ultimately kept her team in the game and a chance of winning. Huge. Which way now for Emma Manzelman? Goes to the shorter side for Brigginshaw. Kick in behind, ricochet. Oh, she's there again. again. Oh, well, it shows her class because she reads the game so well. She's got great paces to be in the right spot, but her awareness and the way that she reads the play and follows it and knows where to be and when to be there is so classy. One person we've got on the sideline that knows all about that, just her work at fullback, Billy Slater, outstanding, Arpie Nichols. 
Yeah, just the commitment she showed to get on that loose ball. But we're all waiting for this talent and speed to break this game open. These big games are won on defence, and the Kiwi Ferns, well, they, they've been the best defensive side out there today, and they've been repelling this Gillaroo's outfit time after time. So uh, is this the first time in seven years that the Kiwi Ferns are going to get a victory over over the Gillaroo? And, Zach, we've got an update on the Kiwi Ferns. Yeah, a huge Captain. boost. A huge boost for the Kiwi Ferns. Their halfback, she just kicked the ball there. She's on screen now. Racely McGregor, she has been cleared to return from ahead. Yeah, she always looked pretty confident of achieving that, Racely McGregor. Still just 25 years of age, Ray. So many years ahead of her. Steering the ship for New Zealand. And the Dragons, too. Yeah, Johnny Soward loves having her as, a, as his number seven. It's crazy to think as well, just prior to the second season last year, she didn't have a club before she signed with the Roosters. Then she goes and has that season and, and wins the Golden Boot. It's just amazing. Tipped on by Upton, oh! and Hufunga swoops, trying to get away from Sergis, who's rounding her up. Oh. <laughs> and they're inside the 40. Contact over the top from Kezi Apps has caused major concern here for Hufunga. We'll be on one. Well, Billy spoke about the defence of the Kiwi Ferns. It was on full display there. That edge defence shooting up, shutting down the threat. Mello Hufunga coming up with the football. She's being assessed here. Referee and Bunker will have a look at the contact. How did Kezi Apps get there so quickly to lend a hand? Hey. She's got legs up to her hey. arm, Speedy. What do you mean? She's got legs twice the length of everyone else on the field. <laughs> That's work rate, though. That's work rate oh, churning up for your teammates, but she could be in a bit of strife. Yeah. It's direct contact to the head, this one. Play it. Play it. Belinda Sharp getting yep. talked to by Liam Kennedy in the bunker. So even though Mele Hufunga's falling, Kezi Apps player, is Liam? in the wrong? Or? Well, it's it's direct contact. Well, she's falling, Kevin. but it's direct it's contact report, with the head, penalty. so she's on report. Hang on. It's a, pen it's a penalty. I, I got, yeah. So Mele Hufunga unlikely to play any Someone. further part in this game. That's Where's a big loss. But New Zealand will be able to get right on the front foot here. May as well just tap it from this position yeah. and go. That's a massive loss. But on the upside, Anessa Biddle can go and play centre on that left. And then they've got Pule who can come back on and be an edge back roll. So they've got good coverage, the Kiwis. And here's Nathan Wong and Biddle in that new role. Shifting out to fill the boots of Mele Hufunga down the stretch here. 13 minutes to go in this international test match. The first women's international here in Melbourne. And it's a gripping encounter. Racine McGregor back on for Nichols. Here comes Abigail Roach. And well done defensively from Isabel Kelly. A dangerous ball runner is Roach. Now Tiakaranga Katoa to set it up. And they're ready to attack left-hand side. Quinlan knows it, fires it to McGregor. Squeezes a kick through. The chaser's getting there. And Whitfield, oh! Stripped out by Tafunga. This is interesting. This might be a seven-tackle set for Australia. Stripped. It yeah. is. What a oh. turning point. They could have corralled Whitfield, but went for the strip and the try and now pay the price. Well, you, you almost, you've almost, it was so close. And that kick from Racy McGregor, finding that little bit of space. Look how close she was. We'd be, it'd be a completely different story if she snatched that because they'd be at least four points ahead of the Gillaroos. Uh, I think play on there. I'd probably give that a crack too if I was to bung up. Wow, what a sliding doors moment. Mark that one down. 58 minutes into the contest. And if Tafunga holds on to the one-on-one -on -one strip, it's a try to put New Zealand in front. Instead, Australia are marching up the ground here with a seven-tackle set. Zach Bailey, down to you. Yeah, Mele Hufunga's uh, Category 2 head knock. It's been deemed, so she's still a chance of coming back, but she's racing the clock. Of course, 15 minutes the assessment is, and there's only 12 minutes remaining. That's 15 minutes of actual time, so she'll be hoping for a stoppage or two to maybe get her back out there. Here's Aiken. Oh, they're looking dangerous, aren't they? Manselman, the previous player, now Aiken. Oh, Manselman coughs it up. It's been a little bit of the story of the night for the Gillaroos. 
Getting really good momentum, looking very dangerous, particularly in the middle, just finding some space in and behind the ruck and then coming up with errors when they've got really good attacking opportunity in front of them. I think a little unlucky prior to that play the ball as well that Taakaranga Katoa wasn't penalised for taking Shannon Mato off the ball. We've seen a few of those being given this year and unfortunately for Emma Manzelman just is unable to take control of that very hard play the ball that happened. Came out a bit quicker than she was anticipating. Is it time for the field goal exponents to get ready? Loz Brown not on the ground for Australia right now. They're number nine, but she was the star for the Gold Coast Titans so far as field goals were concerned. And maybe Brad Donald has to think about getting her back out there. Oh, they've still got three interchanges up their sleeve. So they've got plenty of cards left and they've got plenty of time. And here for the Gillaroos, though, another penalty given away. Back Slop to back. Yeah, sloppy high tackle from Koenig. Inside the final 10 minutes. Just feel the Kiwis look full of energy. With 10 minutes to go, they just they just look ready. Don't they, Bill? Absolutely do, Roo. Uh, just to emphasise the, the goal line defence from the Kiwi Ferns, uh, they've had to do it 35 times as opposed to the Gillaroos 11. They've been inside their opposition 20 metres, a lot more the Gillaroos. So now the Kiwi Ferns, they get their opportunity right now to, to go on the attack. Yeah, there's that differential playing the balls inside the red zone, as Billy Slater was describing. It's all locked up where it counts. Six all on the scoreboard. New Zealand now rolling. Nathan Wong off her shoulder. Strong running by Atessa Pule. And Sergis involved defensively this time. Back to Anderson and Hale. It is Anderson into the halfback role and Quinlan has the dummy half. Nathan Wong the 5'8". Back on the angle, running behind teammates, Leanne Tafuga. High contact, maybe, it's play on for the winger on the last. Racine McGregor, thinking crossfield kick towards the winger. Up they go, off Chapman, yep. and it should be contest. New Zealand's ball. It will be New Zealand ball. Out of Australia, it's a contest, out of Australia. Play the ball. Wow. That kick was on a dime there too. It was Shanice Parker that went up to contest this footy off the, the left shoulder of Jamie Chapman and travels out there but they're under a lot of pressure here the Gillaroos and the Kiwis just keep coming up with different ways to either bend the line or or come up with a really good setup for the next play they look a lot classier with Racine McGregor back on the field the Kiwi Ferns particularly her kicking game if they don't score a try early will they set it up for McGregor to go for one do you think yeah, I think they'll still give themselves a little bit more of a chance to attack. But she'd be the one to do it from the Kiwi Ferns. Don't want to give away a penalty right now, Australia. Hale didn't go outside. They created a massive overlap. McGregor now from dummy half. Can they hold her up? Australia can. Oh, Tiana Davison just missed the jump there. I think she was a bit closer. She might have been over. Hale, bouncing ball behind Quinlan. No panic from New Zealand. They keep it central from Anderson. Jolting tackle from Martor. Late in the count now. McGregor right in front of the uprights. They go left though for Nathan Wong. Here comes the fullback. Nichols, pass on the outside to Fulgar. New Zealand, is this their time? Against the Gillaroos, what a game she has had. Leanne Tafuga for the Kiwi Ferns. Wow, what about the footwork from Tafunga to just stand up Ja'Kaya Whitfeld and take her on the outside. But in the lead up, they just looked so dangerous. They found numbers on the right edge and they come back left. Their set up play, they were giving themselves enough time and space to be able to choose the right option. Jess Sergis came in. Ja'Kaya Whitfeld had a really big job ahead of her and then Tafunga's footwork holding her up, outstanding.
A moment that Leanne Tafunga will never forget. It's her third test match for her country and now her first try. No, it was a lovely little stutter step into the play as well. It, I was just having a look. The Kiwis made another change, so it looks like Melahufunga probably won't be back due to time constraints. So Shanice Parker has moved to left centre, and Nessa Biddle moved back to right edge back row. You can just see how slick they are when that ball gets out there. Ray McGregor. How's the kick? Oh, oh, she oh, 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 A converted try from New Zealand gives them a six-point lead in the dying stages here. And what a try assist again from RP Nichols, one of the star performers today. Oh, the influence that RP Nichols has had on this test match has been huge. Also, Racine McGregor, her kicking game has been a bit of a game changer for the Kiwi Ferns, but RP Nichols defensively has been huge. And then that cutout pass to Tafunga just chose the right option, perfect execution. What a player. NRLW rules, 70 minutes of game time. Inside the final five we go, a converter try the difference. And there is Poulet, left edge back rower. Parker at left centre as Rue was describing. Quinlan the dummy half. Anderson in a different role again. I'd like to see the response from the Gillaroos here. They haven't been in this position for a very long time, chasing points from behind with less than five minutes on the clock and an opposition who is looking full of energy and running. McGregor, the game manager, shifts into that role now, kicks to the corner. Another great kick. So if I'm the, the Kiwis chase. here, the, ca the chase is perfect. You're looking to pin down the Jillaroos, and then this is when Racine McGregor thinks about taking that field goal. And how do Australia get their game breakers into position? They're going to have to be quite inventive. At the moment, they're, they're doing the best they can. They've got their two powerful outside backs getting their set started. And they've got to just ask a couple of questions. Yeah, and when they get into this good field position, they need to hang on to the footy. They've been a little bit loose with it. Emma Tonegato, look at the leg speed. She's back on through the middle. She'll help them getting moving. Shifting it from one side to the other. Kept alive by Koenig, but no one for Brigginshaw to go to now. And the time it was Parker defensively in that new role. Boots tangled up between her and Brigginshaw, slowing down that play of the ball big time. Aiken tumbles one to Nichols. Safe as houses. New Zealand fans making all the noise right now in Amy Park. Well, they just played the ball just inside the 40 metre zone to pretty healthy plays to start their set. A seven game losing streak dating back seven years for New Zealand against the Gillaroos. That run, that last run just tells the story perfectly. Look at the Gillaroos just sitting back and waiting for the Kiwi Ferns. No line speed in the last two tackles whatsoever. And that's why they got this territory. Battle hardened by a third game in as many weeks. Australia had the week off last week. You said you'd rather have played last week and that's the way it's panning out here. New Zealand in control in the last two and a half minutes. McGregor, what about that kick? Chase. Takes Upton into the end goal. Can Tamika get out of there? Ooh, she can. Yes. And a high tackle potentially, given the all clear. Oh, it looked like it climbed up there a little bit, didn't it? Got her around the chops. But we saw one that get away with earlier. It was just Sergis, but she was put on report after the fact. Yeah, their last set, they just had one off run. Slipped up. Yeah. And didn't look like endangering that defensive line at all. So far, that's all the Jillaroos have done. They need to play a little bit of footy here. Take some chances, take some risks. Might just be their last full set of the ball game here, Australia. Up to creative, climbs down, what a tackle! That time it's Abigail Roach. 
forward pass maybe out of dummy half given the all clear kelly chapman outside of her can she create she'll hold on izzy kelly can australia go to work off the back of that 90 seconds remaining well, up in Nichols yet again, up in the face of Isabel Kelly. She's going to get on her bike here, try and... And she does. <laughs> there she is. She's done nothing wrong today. There she is. She has been fantastic. And New Zealand can slow it down here. They'll be in no rush at all. The moment they've longed for. A victory over the trans-Tasman rivals. Pacific Championships serving up an upset in the final week. Male Hufonga and Maya Hilmawana, two leaders of this team, cheering on their side right now as Australia look for a one-on-one -on -one strip. There's nothing doing for Manzelman. And they'll get the footy back with just 30 seconds on the clock. McGregor in between winger and fullback, making it good awkward for Chapman. She's too good. Uppy Nichols and Racine McGregor have just taken oh. this Kiwi Fernside to a whole nother level. And when that siren goes and they win, they're two very key pieces of the puzzle as to why they made it happen. Look at this line speed. It's a, it's a black and white line meeting the Gillaroos. Oh, Brigginshaw kicks from inside her own 20. And fittingly, Arpy Nichols has the ball in her hands. And New Zealand, for the first time since 2016, have knocked off the Gillaroos. What a moment for New Zealand Rugby League and the Kiwi Ferns. Ricky Henry delighted, and his team thoroughly deserved this victory. Look at the emotion for Racine McGregor. And RP Nichols finished it off appropriately. Full time at Amy Park. What a ball game. New Zealand win it. 12 points to six.